Alrighty folks, uh, when you last saw us, we were working away on the um, inverter and Lexus hybrid uh, transmission project. It's kind of turned into one project now. And we were just basically running the system in open loop mode. And I had just gotten my, had my hands on the um, analog devices AD2S1205 eval board. We had rigged it up to the resolver um, on MG2. We could turn it by hand and all of our signals uh, were pretty much uh, as we'd expect them to be. Uh, Johannes wrote code for our inverter uh, to let it run a synchronous motor. And I've been pretty much testing that out uh, where and when I can. Now, basically, my problem here is one of noise. Um, as you'll see in some of the clips, we're going to go through what that noise is and where it's coming from, and you know, try to work out some ways of dealing with it. But in short, uh, what's actually happening is that the incremental encoder emulation outputs from the um, R2D board are firing when they should not. And that is causing those pulses to be sent to the inverter. And the inverter uses those pulses to calculate the rotor angle, uh, which is basically how it controls the motor. And if we can't calculate that rotor angle or if that rotor angle is calculated incorrectly uh, we get a shake rattle and roll instead of a nice spin up and spin down as we'd expect. So uh, that's kind of where we're at. Um, I've been, as Jack would say, some days you're the bug and some days you're the windscreen. Well I've been the bug on this one. Uh, for quite some time now, so I'm really hoping uh, that we can get to the bottom of this noise problem. I've gone ahead and I've put shielded cables on the uh, DAC and the DC um, cables here, and I've been trying all kinds of things, uh, which you'll see in some of the clips. Um, why am I doing this? Why am I messing around with this gearbox? Shouldn't I be working on the pans or putting in all the auxiliary systems and so on? Um, there's a big win here, if we can get it to work. This gearbox is, uh, I mean from flange to bell housing is maybe a little over two feet long, maybe two and a half feet long. Um, it's capable of 200 horsepower from what I can see. Uh, we went through all the details of it, it's got all the nice things, the two speed auto and the parking and all the other great stuff in there. Um, so I don't want to proceed too much on the, the Panzer because I believe, I hope, fingers are all crossed, uh, that I'll be putting this gearbox into the tunnel of the Panzer and uh, using it as my drivetrain, which would be really cool. So that's why we're messing with this guy and putting so much, much effort into uh, working out this noise problem. Um, as you'll hear me say later in the video, I don't have the correct connectors for this. this gearbox uh, which would be a big help to me so if anyone knows where I could source the wiring harness for a GS450H uh, uh, gearbox uh, then please let me know um, I've been just not just coming, just coming up dry on that uh, so that's it I'm going to shut up um, this will be a pretty boring video it'll be for the nerds I'm afraid uh, you're going to see descriptions of all the electronics and oscilloscope shots and stuff here. So, um, I had hoped to make a video where you'd see this spin up and spin down and uh, we'd be doing tests on it like that. 
hopefully that's not too far away. Uh, but if you guys can maybe have a look at some of these clips and um, tell me what you think. So other than that, uh, as usual, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the far side. Okay, so we've got our resolver to digital board here. And we're connected uh, with some very short cables. I've just been playing with some ferrites here. Uh, twisted, twi twisted cables, um, exciter, sine and cosine. Uh, they're fairly short, only maybe four, maybe five inches lo long. Uh, connected uh, to the various screw terminals on the board. And indeed, if we have uh, and the inverter is powered down, well, the high voltage is is powered down. If we turn our motor, um, the LEDs here, the top LED is the direction. So if I turn it that way, it's on. If I turn it the other way, it goes off. And our two guys here are the um, A and B encoder emulation channels. And in there, just above them, you can't really see it flash um, visibly is the north marker signal but I can assure you it does indeed fire. So when we turn the motor by hand this board behaves exactly uh, as it, sh it should. Um, the north marker fires the incremental encoder emulation channels uh, fire exactly as they should um, and all seems to be right with the world. Now presently little pin header here uh, with ground north marker and the A channel that I have a lead that I connect back to the inver inver inverter logic board that's currently disconnected um, I want to show you guys what actually happens here firstly on this board and then we'll go through some other bits and pieces so right now uh, the inverter is currently punched up um, it's just waiting on a Tron A throttle signal to fire the IGBTs uh, but we've got no high voltage bus so if I press the throttle um, nothing happens on the board we got no no LEDs flashing, just as you'd expect. Now, <clears throat> with the signals not connected, um, what's going to happen is when I bring up the high voltage supply, uh, the inverter won't move the stator uh, field. So what we will see happen is. Um, the rotor might move a very small amount, uh, but will then basically sp basically not spin. And what that al is allowing me to do is it's allowing me to fire um, AC into the uh, stator without turning the motor. So I've got the contactor off, so let's go ahead and pre-charge. Cables connected. Now I'm going to close the main contactor. I hear that go in. And uh, I just want to make sure you guys can see those LEDs. I think you can. I'm going to just gently squeeze the throttle here. And we see the rotor moved a very small amount and then stop. Now I'm going to try and bring the throttle pedal into the frame because I think it's important that you see that. So here's my throttle. And there's my LEDs on my board. Observe as I bring the throttle on, those LEDs pulse. And I let the throttle off, they pulse. Pulse on, pulse off. Now when I hold the throttle fully on, they don't fire at all. When I hold the throttle fully off, they don't fire. But as I change the throttle, notice the direction indicator changes. And at no point, visibly, is the rotor turning. So I can just move that throttle. As I pulse the throttle, those, those LEDs are firing away. Now, 
the little flicker that you guys see there is in fact a lot of pulses. Uh, we'll be able to see that on the oscilloscope soon. So that's very low current that we have going into the rotor or sorry into the stator uh, as well. So this is where my problem is. I don't think the inverter has will have any kind of a problem with running this motor um, but the problem is uh, that it's getting spurious signals and knowing the exact position of the rotor in an internal permanent magnet motor uh, is pretty important. So if we're getting spurious signals, so I'll try and get rid of some of these, I was just playing with some of these, these are just um, worth EM uh, ferrites for conducted emissions. Um, mitigation in mains powered equipment. I was just playing around with them. So these are my, that's my sine and that's my cosine and that's my exciter. Now I don't currently have the plug that fits on to these guys. I'm having difficulties even finding a, one of these cars that I can get some parts from like the plug. So what I have is I just got these uh, they're just push on terminal single conductor push on and these guys are on here they're all twisted together I have tried interminable combinations of this I've had them separate uh, I've had them long I've had them in screened cable um, I've had them as physically short as humanly possible so you know maybe about inch and a half long I've had the board shoved right up there. Um, none of that makes the slightest difference uh, to this um, spurious firing of the uh, signals. Now, I've gone to the screen cable, both on the battery and on the mo motor. Uh, I've played around with grounding this board to the case of the uh, gearbox and that made a big difference. Uh, initially I thought that was pretty much a slam dunk. I thought that um, that you know that was pretty much the problem um, and indeed there's some red LEDs up there for there's conditions in this device known as degradation of signal and loss of tracking. Uh, that come on and before I had this lead here connecting the analog ground somewhere to the chassis of the gearbox those would come on and you would get absolute rubbish signals uh, coming out. So what I'm going to do now is just to prove the point I'm going to disconnect the high voltage bus so I've just got a crap lip down here it's the high voltage turned off and just pull the main contactor as well just in case I forget that. And I'm going to go back here now. I'm going to pump the throttle. And you'll see what's going to happen. And when we finally get rid of the voltage on the capacitors, my noise problem stops. So, this particular eval board does have facility for some simple filtering and I've played around with values of um, resi resistor capacitor filters most of the time they create more problems than they solve because they, they, they introduce phase shift into the signals which yeah that's not a good thing when you're measuring phase, sh phase shift so uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to I'm going to Go ahead and set up the oscilloscope here and let you guys look in at the signals both when the uh, when I just turn the shaft manually and when we run it um, with the inverter powered on and you'll see some of uh, what I think is causing us the problem here. Okay guys, sorry about the focus on that, it just doesn't seem to want to play. Um, so what we're looking at now 
is a 10 kilohertz uh, signal. It's been read with a 20 to 1 differential probe. Uh, currently the peak to peak voltage being displayed on the oscilloscope is 174 millivolts. And we're at 10.00 to 10.01 kilohertz. I'm going to put a vice grips on the motor. And I'm going to just turn it. And we're seeing the amplitude of the um, cosine signal varying and if I turn the motor slowly we'll be able to see that all happening happy as a clam and my LEDs are doing pretty much the same thing here they're doing what they need to do so I'm going to go ahead and change over um, Just rotating it a little bit. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and change over to the sign signal. Now, before I do, why don't I crank down the time base and just uh, where am I going here? I should be able to just let you guys see the shape of the waveform as I crank the motor over. Off piste here, guys. Sorry, Emmy. Go back a bit on that. And a bit of extra time base. There we go. So that's our current waveform. When I crank over, we see the call sign signal amplitude changing uh, just as it should. Stop turning, and we go to steady amplitude. So I'll change over to the sign just to prove the point. Unfortunately, I don't have two differential probes. Uh, in here for a minute. There are test points on this board, but whoever engineered them uh, must have been living in the real world. Okay, now we're on the sign signal. I just leave it on that slow time base and crank over. So there you go. And if I stop turning, we go to steady amplitude. So I'll crank up my time base again. And there's my sign signal. Doing what it needs to do. And just crank it over and we see amplitude change. Now, we take the uh, vice grips off the motor, well, gearbox or whatever you want to call it. So there we are, okay, nice clean signal. And I'm going to reconnect the high voltage, pre-charge, and contact our close. There we go. Give it a little bit of throttle. Rotor moves a small bit, which we expect. And there's our signal. Um, I did this position, so let's get a bit better resolution on that. Now, when I press the throttle, things go crazy. And I get all this nastiness appearing on my waveform. Now. When I'm in a throttle off condition, at this particular position on the motor, I've got a peak to peak voltage of about 54.8 millivolts. When I press the throttle in, that reading is now 63.2 millivolts. And we're dancing away here. So, one thing we can do, so I'll try and do it for you guys, is this. Uh, let's see if we can stop that and we can kind of zoom in a bit show you guys exactly what that is now it's a fairly fast waveform uh, let me get some cursors on here manual 
claim. Uh, Carceret, let's pick one we can get a reasonable rating on. And Carceret. And in this case, I'm getting a frequency of about 6.6 .6 megahertz uh, on that particular part of the noise. Now, zooming back in, we can kind of see that it's a fairly complicated pattern. Now, if I take one of my noise peaks, so let's say all roughly there, and change, oh crap, change cursor, and I go on here, I'm getting just under 18 kilohertz. Uh, for the frequency of that noise and my inverter switches at 8.8 .8 kilohertz so sorry about the focus on this I know it's really bad I just can't seem to want to make it uh, do what I wanted to do but should be able to get a rough idea um, of what it's doing. So this is my noise problem. Um, it's the presence of this noise that is causing and I can actually just you know where I can see the LEDs are pulsing away madly. Now the crazy thing and I think this is what's causing the problem. I don't think it's the noise. I think it's the noise altering the waveform amplitude that is being perceived by the converter. The reason I say that is, if I just bang the throttle on and I hold it here, we're getting no false triggering on our resolver to digital. It's when I change the throttle setting, as we just saw, that that noise, those peaks move around that's when the fun starts. So, that is uh, a look at what my noise problem seems to be. Okay, so I'm now connected uh, to the A channel output uh, from the converter. And if I press my throttle, well, I need to crank the time base down a bit. Here's all our pulses that shouldn't be there. Lots and lots of pulses. And what those pulses do is they tell the software the rotor position. And if the software doesn't know where the position is, it tends to shake, rattle and roll. But again, observe that Full throttle on, we get a burst of pulses, but we get none. I'm now pumping current into the stator. If I go throttle off, I get a burst. Throttle on, burst. Throttle off, just didn't catch it, I'd say. And if I modulate the throttle on and off, there's lots of lovely messy pulses. And it's those pulses are giving me a bad hair day, folks. And just for completeness sake, um, if I connect my signal uh, back to the inverter, Oops, wrong way, Corrigan. There you go, get in there. And of course, because I'm on camera, it won't. There we go. It'll be the world's worst connection, but that, believe it or not, is the least of my problems at the moment. Uh, power the card back up. And if we apply throttle, away madly.
because our calculation of rotor position has been completely screwed up by all of the spurious pulses generated uh, from our resolver to digital card.